Welcome back everyone. This is part four of our Secure Starter Kit Cloud Connect Quick Start Guide walkthrough. In the last section, we configured the parameters for our cloud formation build and started that stack building process. We've come back here 15 minutes later, and if you're following along, you'll probably be on the events tab, which gives you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of all of the actions CloudFormation is taking to build the various dependencies in your stack up through its completion. You can see based on our timestamps here from about 137 to about 151 was our build time, so about 14 minutes. If you go over to the stack info page in the overview you'll see the status create complete. That means our whole stack has finished building and we are ready to go. If you're keeping score at home, you may notice that my stack name has changed from the last video. And I'd like to take a minute and tell you exactly why that is. In the previous video, I was building this stack in cloud formation using an IAM user. Uh, an IAM user is a user account that is built in your AWS account that is not your root account. So when you make an AWS account, you will create what's known as your root user. And that user is the one that has the highest level of permissions and is essentially the owner of your account as far as AWS is concerned. Now you can build other users under your account that will have different username and passwords and can have limited permissions to perform specific actions inside of AWS. This is an extremely useful feature uh, if you're trying to share work on a project you need to give someone credentials to log in and work on that project uh, or you'd like to create sub users to handle specific tasks um, or you want to create a user that has limited ability to create assets that might impact your account financially, there's many, many good reasons to use IAM users. In my particular case, uh, I did not check ahead of time that the IAM account I was using had the suffi sufficient permissions to create all of the resources that are needed in this cloud formation build and so my build was not successful using that IAM user account. So what I've done is log back in under my root user account, which again has the highest level of permissions, and gone through the same exact process of hosting the files on our S3 bucket and creating a key pair in EC2 and then building the stack using the same parameters pointing to our files. So the, the rest of the process was exactly the same as we've gone over in previous videos. I'm simply using an account that has sufficient permissions to complete this stack. Now, I could have uh, gone through and created a new IAM user or edited the one I was using to change its permissions such that it would be able to complete this process. Uh, I found it to be easier and more expedient personally to simply go back to my root account and rerun through this process and if that's the way that you want to solve this issue then by all means feel free to do the same thing. Now moving on we want to go to outputs and you'll see at the bottom we now have a website URL we're going to open this in a new tab and we're greeted with our SSK Cloud Connect portal. We can now log into this portal using the IAM account that was created in our stack. If we go back to Cloud Formation, go to our parameters you'll see an IAM username. This is an IAM user 
that this cloud formation is going to create as your account that you can essentially log into Cloud Connect with. So I've chosen the name Demo Test User. And then we need to enter our password, which is found in the accompanying Secure Starter Kit Cloud Connect Quick Start Guide in Section 3, Step 20. Here we are. We're logged in. If you look under users here, you can see the user that was created during the build process. That's the user that was specified in our parameters in cloud formation. You can see some account information that's being pulled in from my AWS account. And this is another one of my IAM users that exists in my account currently. So you can see that the build process has imported a lot of the user information from your existing account. You're also able to change your current user display by clicking on the burger option menu here, clicking on null null. And you can see we're brought to a page where we can edit our profile information. So our username is already populated. We're also being asked for a first name, last name, email, and mobile number with the required fields indicated with asterisks. And in order to update your actual name here, just populate these fields. and click update. And you see our user profile has been updated successfully and our burger option menu has already updated with our new display name. Note that the username and the display name are separated in the Cloud Connect tool so that you log in using the username, but the name in the drop down is actually indicating your profile with your name and contact information. Well, that concludes our walkthrough for this secure starter kit. Cloud Connect Quick Start Guide. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.